Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Oh, messy! This is professional wrestler Jimmy Vine, the Boogie Woogie Man. Tell my people, and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss booking the territory. Oh yeah! This is a one-man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast, where today we're covering WCW Saturday Night on TBS from April the 18th, 1992. If you're listening on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and sub to the channel and hit the like button on the video and help us continue to grow our channel. Uh, big time shout out to Disrespectfully Classy, Marky Blassie, Mike Childry, Joe Ice, good old Justin. Thank you for your generous support on Patreon each and every month and being the sponsors of this show. And you too can become a patron by going to tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Got a Patreon shout out this week as well. But I will do that right after I throw it to the man who's been having the blues since Sunday, September the 24th. Because his Cowboys did the job to the low life Cardinals. Son of Mr. A bitch. 17 and 0, Super Bowl suck it. Once again, he's let down. Doc, how was your weekend? Hey, I'm going to come out and face this thing just like Deion Sanders did. You know, sometimes you get your butt kicked in life, and I'm not going to run from it. We played terrible. We weren't prepared. It was poor coaching. It was poor execution. It was it was everything in all facets of the game. We were 11 and a half point favorites. We lost by 12 to a team that was, I mean, borderline SEC team. Inexcusable. Uh, I expect this to get fixed this week. Um, I expect it, uh, uh, a quick turnaround. We're going to pull the nose up on this thing. Um, and if we do. There's no reason to to get down in on ourselves. Sixteen and one looks doable. Um, you just got to get back to the basics. Stop committing the, the the penalties, not turning the ball over, creating turnovers. You know, basic fundamental, good football, and uh, we'll be fine. How, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you're not skating. At least I don't. Either. At least I don't have crab legs running around trying to be my quarterback. Oh, you're not skating that easy. Okay, no you're not. Way. No, you're not skating that easy. You see, Harper and I are realist. We yeah. don't sit here and come on here and yell 17 and no Super Bowl suck it because we're not a moron like you. And it's so funny. All those little excuses you just gave, it's like rinse repeat. This is every single time they fall flat on their face because we know that's what's going to happen. And all of your little cowboy fans do the same thing yearly. We them boys, this our year. Oh, we fell flat on our face. We're going to good, but but next week we'll get it. Oh, playoffs, we'll get it. Wash, rinse, repeat. Same story Damn. over and over. It kind of is, for real. It's the every, same thing. Every team, every team loses a regular season game, Mike, except for two. Ever. Right. So we're supposed to just dismiss that for the last eight years of us doing this show. First was 16 and 0. Now that they have 17 games now, 17 and 0 Super Bowl suck it. We're supposed to just dismiss for the last eight years. You, you've started the same way every single year. And it, it always turns out the same way with either a playoff loss or missing the playoffs. Is it within the realm of possibility that I am exaggerating for effect for the good of the show? Yeah, I'm not going there with you. Oh, you wouldn't because yeah. you don't want to admit that it's a work. But I'll give away I'll give away some some Patreon level content. I didn't pick the Cowboys to win the division in the damn football picks. Well, no, don't pick? let don't let Giants? him pull the wool over your eyes because he did something else as it pertains to the Cowboys. And I don't want to spoil it for the not for the for the people who are patrons. If you want to hear what he did. 
He might not have picked them to win the division, but he made some ridiculous predictions so, so in the how, playoffs. So, would, how were they going to how were they going to go seventeen and zero if I'm over here picking them to not win the division? <sighs> not everything so you, just, you see is real. You're yeah. just playing spin doctor. Um, by the way, I do want to plug one. It's thing. called playing both sides against the middle. Spin okay. doctors. I remember there's that. a there's a new Twitter account out there called at Meltzer NFL. You got to go follow it. Okay. You got to go follow it. Um, yeah. This is my brainchild, but this is not me. And uh, it's just tremendous. Anyway, go That's follow nice. it. You're welcome. Okay. Um, on that note, Doc, we had several other things. Now that we kicked you in the balls, the Cowboys lost. You know, we'll probably get to do this multiple more times this year. Yeah. So, not the Saints are going to uh, win their division, though. I, I, I'm not. I can't sign up for that, Hawk. See, not with everybody, Higgs. everybody. Scott could do that because good, everyone good for, sucks. Good for you. I can't do it. Okay. I can't. That old line is a disaster. Week, bruh. He's bruh. Done beating up people and. In Vegas, you can put Jesus behind that line, and he could float, no, and it won't work because that, that line, line is going to so get him. Underrated. Okay, that line is pitiful. I'm not yeah. here to talk football, though. We got a lot. Of, well, actually, maybe I am because Doc had something else football related. I think so. Okay, so it was a good weekend of uh, college football this past weekend. The weekend before was terrible. There was no matchups. Last Saturday night, there was all kinds of matchups, and y'all were stuck. And I watched this too because it was a it was a good game. That that well, it was fun to watch if you don't care. But LSU versus Arkansas game. But over on the other network, it was fucking heel versus fucking heel. When Ohio State and oh, Notre yeah. Dame get it on. Oh yeah, Darren D Man wasn't happy. Oh, that's he right. He's a, we, we, we couldn't even get nothing players on the field. God damn it. He's a big Notre Dame guy. Of I bet he is. I bet He's you. Like, he this one hurts, bro. This one hurts. <laughs> they can't even fucking count to 11. How are they going to win a game? Now. <laughs> hey, come on. Now. They're busy uh, ta- uh, uh, counting the Ten Commandments, and they got stuck on 10, and, and, and <laughs> fuck. No good heel versus heel matchup can go without a, one of the heels and maybe both of the heels cutting a little bit of promo work. We need some stick work uh, to get this thing going. Mike, I believe you uh, you have some thoughts on um, it takes it takes a big man to follow in the footsteps of Urban Meyer up there. You you really think a lot of the Ohio State coach, right? I don't like Ohio State football. Urban Meyer just neither don't do, gasoline do I. on it. And torched it. He's just a horrible human being. Um, I told you earlier today, I don't really hate Notre Dame. I, I, I'm i indifferent. I have friends that are Notre Dame fr- fans, and I just, I never understood like the appeal to liking them unless you were like from that region or I don't know. It just wasn't, I, I never was into them. They just weren't my cup of tea. But Ohio State, nuclear heat. So, because of Urban Meyer, and he's just a, why? Just, what is this? What did he ever do to you? Well, he he's covered a up. Human. He covered up a a serious domestic abuse issue. For one, he with, also one was it, running a program that had Aaron Hernandez in it. Um, well, wasn't he involved in some little scandals, like like sexual or? or we're not going to go that far. I can't, can't speak just say that. those things, but. But it's Allegedly. amazing if you would if you would have ever heard his interviews around the whole domestic abuse thing with his assistant coach, and his wife was well aware of it, and he claimed his oh, wife didn't tell him about that. it. Anyway, that fool got a that fool got a bad case of acid reflux and fled town too. And and, and so that so that happened. I I think he I think he gets suspended for several games. And then I will never forget the media calling his games that year as he all of a sudden, or maybe it was the next year, he was having these headaches. They're like, oh, Urban's really struggling on the sideline with the headaches. And I'm like, when did this turn into the Urban Meyer redemption tour? Like 
this he's like dude. Deion Sanders. No, don't no, compare him to no, Deion. No, That's no, not no, even no, close. Come on. It's not like nah, nah. I, I, I that's, don't don't, don't compare those two. In a cowboy Deion, hat, and he's straight. No, Dion's fine. We'll we'll get to Dion later in the season, and yeah. we're gonna let that marinate for a while because everybody else is jumping in on that. But I think that's pretty inaccurate to compare those two. <laughs> yeah, there's no comparison. Dion's an upstanding human being. You know, does his thing. Some people don't like the way he does his thing. Whatever. They can't stand to see gonna, a black man succeed. You know how that I, feels, right, Mike? I, I I I like Dion. I hope he has success. I don't I think like he's winning that. Here's the you other know. thing. I'm gonna get baited into it. I didn't have a problem with what Oregon's coach said. They're just cutting promos. That's all yeah. they're doing. It wasn't bad. Yeah. So back to Ohio State. This asshole okay. Ryan Day takes over after Urban Meyer. And like Doc set the stage. To him, it was heel versus heel. To me, it was heel versus eh. You know, it's Notre Dame. Whatever. D-Man loves him. My friend JB out there loves him. I know a lot of people love Notre Dame. Whatever. And, but Ohio State, evidently, Lou Holtz, who's 87 some odd years old, was on the Pat McAfee he's got show. He's decades, almost nine, of being a clown. So he's a clown, too, by the way. And he's on there working, and he's, you know, cutting promos on the McAfee show, which I like McAfee, it's too. I another clown show, and I like <laughs> which. I like I like McAfee. I don't watch his show or listen all the time, but when I catch it, it's funny. Well, yeah. Holtz cuts some promos, and bitch boy Ryan Day <laughs> got worked into a shoot, and here was his response after Ohio State beat Notre Dame on Saturday night, the 23rd of September, I believe it was. Here it is. Coach, you knew this one wasn't going to be easy, but it came down to the wire. And what can you say about the performance from your quarterback, Kyle McCord, to finish that drive? Toughness. Toughness. That's it. Physicality, cross the board, finish it off, having guts. You know, like I like to know where Lou Holtz is right now. What he said about our team, what he said about our team, I cannot believe. This is a tough team right here. We're proud to be from Ohio. It's always been Ohio against the world. And it'll continue to be Ohio against the world. But I'll tell you what, I love those kids, and we got a tough team. What did they prove to you tonight in this victory that you'll take away and run with? Toughness. Everybody's questioning these kids all the time. We had one bad half the last couple years. That's it. Everybody wants to question these guys. These guys are warriors right here to come back and win. This kid right here to come back in the second half and win. I'm emotional about this for a reason. A lot of people question these kids and say a lot of things about them. I love them. When someone attacks your family to come in and win like this is special. It's a great win for our program and a great win for Ohio State. Can you take us through the play call to run the ball on fourth down? What was behind the decision to do that for you? I'll take a deep breath now. (laughs) So he works himself into a shoot. Now he wants to calm down and take a deep breath and (laughs) answer a question. He wants to break it down into X's and O's after he cuts his promo. So I, I saw this live. Like I watched the end of it. And and when he starts in with this, everybody wants to question. It's Ohio he like versus he's everybody. Man. He, bruh, <laughs> he sounds like a kid that that is just overly emotional. Everybody ain't like calling kid, you out. He sounds like a kid who's convinced that the computer's cheating him at Madden. Yeah. I'm like, so of course. Half pint. I, I get to get ten different people messaging me or emailing me about this this damn promo, this asshole cut. All of them are laughing at him, by the way. All of them are laughing. Like this dude, this dude worked himself into a shoot. And the reason we're talking about it on a wrestling show is because he really got his panties in a bunch and had to he cut got, a promo on an eighty seven year old man who doesn't even coach anymore. He got worked. He got worked into yeah. a shoot. Oh Let my God! Any, any guy that, that fucking dyes his beard with shoe polish is a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. I was gonna bring it up, Hopper, so I'm glad you said it. He's got this beard that's kind of like patchy, and it's dyed. It's like the Hogan beard. Yeah. It's worse because it's it's like patchy, like like it's like he's he's got spots on it that are missing that don't have a lot of hair. I, I, I'm this dude. He's like a mangy dog with shoe polish on it. <laughs> I, I, it. Yeah, he took the shoe polish dye and he's got it on his beard. Man, this dude. It's, it's and here's the and other it, thing. And I hate to I hate to 
to break dispel this myth. We aren't all sitting around in the other 49 states out to get Ohio. The only yeah, state right. that doesn't like Ohio is Michigan, and y'all can deal with that yourselves on your own time. Nobody is down here in Texas or Louisiana actively plotting against Ohio or the state. Yeah, no one gives a shit about no damn Buckeye, some fucking state flower. You, y'all, are, y'all are the Rust Belt. I love we're watching not, the Ohio State-Michigan game yearly. Like, that's a great game. I mean, when it's competitive. I mean, they've had years where it's not competitive. So, like, sure, I, but I, I don't wish death on people from Ohio, Ohio against everybody. What is wrong yeah. with this dude? He's, well, he got he got bettered by an 87-year-old man and then decided he could talk his way out of it, and he can't. Hey, and I know you want to talk about this another time, but... I just want to say, Dion got spanked. That's all right. They'll be fine. They, you know, They're it's his get first spanked year. Again next week. Oh yeah. And hold on. It's gonna oh. be bad too. <laughs> let me say. Let me say one more thing about that. Uh, Oregon. Everybody getting worked into a shoot over the Oregon coach. Have you never spent time in a locker room, man? The stuff that said sometimes can sound criminal. Okay, so get over yourself and your fake outrage. At the end of the day, here's here's the aspect of it that you need to look forward to. Dion said, hey, we got our butt kicked. You know what? Get us now while, while you can get us. Guess what? Uh, the next time they play, uh, well, the Pac-12 is getting obliterated. But anyway, if and when there is a rematch with those two coaches involved, get your popcorn ready. Yeah, that's, right. that's all I'm saying. So, Personally, you know what? Stop working yourself into a shoot. He, the coach said what he said. Dion said what he said. And next time, we'll have some fun when they play. But people getting outraged over is just crazy. Dion's gonna be all right, man. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't understand the hate for Dion either. But that's well. Why is there a DJ in the locker room? <laughs> that's I mean, not traditional football. Oh, what the pit bull, bro? You you want to know what's funny? Go back to the '90s when Jerry Glanville was coaching the Falcons. Jerry Glanville, Jimmy D- Johnson, just whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. when he when Glanville had Dion in Atlanta. And uh, MC uh, uh, Hammer would be in there, and they're too legit to quit in the locker room. In the yeah, 90s. remember that video? <laughs> yes. Yeah. In the, the 90s, I they love, were doing that. The video I love with white coaches is the one where in basketball, Roy Williams rounds the corner and starts dancing. He's like down in a crouch, and he starts dancing with his players. <laughs> Look that up if you haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, you know which one I'm all... talking about, Mike? Yeah, it's always good to see old white guys break it down with young brothers. <laughs> it's always great, man. These coaches will do anything. Yeah, it's funny, man. All right, Doc, uh, do we need to get serious for a minute? You want to go uh, to the Dutch well, route? Or you gonna, do I mean, else? What do y'all think about fucking uh, the Broncos getting destroyed? Not my problem. <laughs> I got my own problems. <laughs> Hopper, they in for a long year. If that... <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy, it's guess what? We're getting those fucking draft picks, aren't we? Yeah, there's a second rounder involved. So if they yeah. lose, like, like let's say if they end up with a high second round pick, that's the Saints get I mean, it. We're straight, dumbasses. Yeah. yeah. So I'm cheering for them to lose. I hate yeah, to say why it. Why not? I mean, what happened to stuff. Russ Wilson, dude? He forgot how to be great. Yeah. Everybody falls off the cliff at some point. How much of that Roy Williams won again? <laughs> that fool came in there with everything but a mint julep in his hand. <laughs> All right, let's uh, God let's uh, damn. let's let's keep going, uh, Doc. Um, we got other stuff to cover before we, uh before we, we got to. Okay, so it, but... um, do you have a patron review? You said. Oh, yeah, I did. Um, One new patron. Harper, I'm going to cash... send you something real quick. I want you to take a look at it. I'm going to text All you. Right. I'm glad you said that. We do have one new patron, Cash V. Thanks for becoming a patron. We do have a pay-per-view coming up right. in the next month, Wrestle War. You don't want to miss it. The only way to listen to it is by going to tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt. That is tinyurl.com slash BT. A great way to support the show, get tons of extra content. All of the clashes are there. All of the video versions of the shows are there. The ECW shows, the NWA Power shows, the world class shows with the uh, SMU heavyweight and myself. 
available on Patreon, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. You'll get, basically, you get like between four and eight extra shows a month when you're on Patreon. So tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Like I said, great way to support the show. Uh, Also, before I forget, because I almost forgot, uh, we did have one new podcast addict five-star review. Harper's going to love this one. It is from Serial Addict. It says, this podcast is the best thing going today, and you either need to get on board with it or get left behind, baby. The comedy is the cherry on top of the old school wrestling discussion. The people that don't like the content really get my go and should see a life coach. I don't know what that's supposed to say, but they should see a life coach. Yeah. So thank you, Serial Addict. And if you want... Your five-star review read on air. Just submit one on either Podcast Attic or iTunes, and as soon as I see it, I will read it on air and shout you out. It doesn't cost a thing. All you got to do is submit that review. Okay. Doc, you're up. Um, I have a couple of things. We have a few more things. I, the longer we keep talking, the less we have to go talk about this stupid talk show bullshit. Stop! It's not that bad. You're getting on my nerves Harper, with is that. Is the talk show stuff that bad? It, this is the worst thing. See? Says the guy who's not even watching the shows. Uh, exactly. Okay, so here, this may be like sometimes we make a list of things we want to talk about so we don't forget because we're getting old and forgetful. This may be the craziest list, pre-show talk list that we've ever done. Um, Harper. <laughs> I'm just looking at this Roy Williams picture. Just, yeah. It's so ridiculous. I can GIF going. Yeah. Um, why were you driving around with egg yolks in your car? <laughs> well, you see what happens is I go to Walmart and they get the two, you get two eggs for like a dollar fifty. They're in like the little pack, right? So I, I eat, you know, the white, right? I eat the egg and I throw the egg yolk out, and it's safe. But no, they got seagulls fucking everywhere. It's like you're in fucking Biloxi, and then so I throw it out there, and they all just form. They all swoop down, and this one goddamn fucking seagull almost like flew in the fucking car, bro. Flew in a car to the car window. I had to it's just on. different. Is this different than the than the 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 um, chromosome challenge ducks that you fought a few years ago? Yeah. Okay. But the ducks didn't fly in the fucking car. He so was you trying had to get, in get the, the car? goddamn uh, like pretty much almost. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> so you were throwing egg yolks out the window of your car and got yeah. attacked by seagulls. And I'm like, "Y'all are eating y'all's own, you cannibal motherfuckers!" Here. And the goddamn seagull basically flew in the fucking window. I had to Did shoot you punch him. it? No, I, I, I shoot them off. What the fuck is goddamn seagulls, bro? I swear to God. They're like flying rats. They are like flying rats. That's true. Fuck. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you, you survived that. That sounds dangerous, and we wouldn't want anything to happen to you at the hands of... It was like the, the, the fucking Alfred Hitch, uh, Hitchcock movie. The who? Alfred Hickok. <laughs> you said it different that time, but it wasn't correct yet. <sighs> okay. Yeah, he did make a movie about that. You see that, Mike? <laughs> I'm just laughing. You uh, see the birds? Okay. Um, no. Did you send it already? You need to say... What? You were saying so something what? about, did I see the birds? Yeah. Have you seen that the movie, birds. The Birds? No. God yeah. damn, you're black. Wow. I hate you. I really do. Grow yeah, up. Right. That's you why. That but see, you're white, Harper, and that's why you hate Dion. Yeah, no. I love Dion. It's shaking. I love seeing the schools who have been trash all of a sudden rise up and shake things up. It's, it's always fun. Yeah. Colorado's doing that. Uh, Tulane and, did it last year. Yeah, Tulane and and and, and I mean Kansas. I mean they're four and zero. Duke's four and zero. You know so, Ohio, little Ohio State. Everybody picks on them. They'll be okay though. Yeah, I love seeing those. The, the, that fan base has something to fucking cheer about. 
So yeah, sure, why not? They yeah. got legal nobody. Speed. Nobody likes. I'm sorry, I don't say nobody. There is a segment of the population for college football and in life generally that does not like disruptors. And Dion I love disruptors. is a disruptor. Yeah. So there is well, a population I got some bad news of people. For those people when the robots take their jobs. So when the pe- there's a there's a segment of the people who d- who just don't like the way. I mean, it's not just Dion; it's it's others as well. But they just don't like that. I think uh, it's yeah, cool, but- man. Like you know, here's the thing: if if it was Dion, if it was look look here here's how you, <laughs> here's my loyalties. I'm cool with whatever Dion's doing now. If he played LSU. And they were playing for the national title, man. He can go kick rocks. I'd want them to to murder Colorado. But you know, then that's the thing. It's like well, you could wish success on others until they're playing your team. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> like right. uh, I'm, and I'm sure there are others out there who feel that way. Like there might be an Alabama fan who's like, "Oh no, you know, Dion's cool. I like what he's doing. Let them play Alabama in a national title." You will hear Alabama fans curse out the buffs. So, whatever. Now, we're going to thank a couple of people here for something that we don't know who they are, but we know what you did. So, Mike and I got a text this week from Harper. In addition to the Seagulls, Harper let us know that we were mentioned on Dutch, Dirty Dutch's podcast. Oh, yeah. So what happened there? Uh, No, they just did some little poll to see, like, what other podcasts you listen to. Way to sell it. Yeah, basically, Dutch, Dutch, I guess Dutch and his co-host wanted to know you know, what other podcast their listeners that listen to the Dutch pod were or yeah. who those folks were, or, you know, what, what shows those were. And basically they took a list and they started marking off how many people mentioned this. So anyway, we were mentioned as one of many shows that were mentioned on Dutch's podcast. We got the same amount of votes or mentions from Dutch's listeners as Jericho's show, which wasn't same. a lot. But so that, so that means we should get more downloads. <laughs> so anyway, um, I think Cornette's was the most most popular or most mentioned. I mean, yeah, doesn't shock he's like, me. Uh, he's like the Coca Cola of fucking podcast, but nothing stop nothing stopping him unless the, he decides to fucking not do it. But the thing is, if even people that hate him, I know they will listen. They fucking hate listen, dude. Dude, Dude, they hate, hate listen. How many people hate me and listen to this show? No. Bro, Cornette gets people who hate him. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some people that hate him that refuse to listen. I get it. Whatever. But, man, there are people out there. And you can tell the ones who hate listen. Because they they can tell you everything he's ever said in the last three years. But they hate him. Like, so, and then there's people who can't stand him and it's like, ah, yeah, I just can't deal with him. But he gets, he gets listens because people hate listen. Uh, along with the people that love him too, obviously. But So know. we want to thank the listeners that chimed into that poll and got us on there and got us mentioned. It was probably Zoncha and like, you know. D-Man. Yeah, D-Man. Like, oh, you know, Booker Territory. And, 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 and but someone said that the Piper podcast. <laughs> yeah, Dutch was like, "Well, he's been dead for six years, or how yeah, long?" Yeah, he's been dead for like eight fucking years, dude. What, right. what the what? Yeah. Anyway, we would like to thank our listeners for getting us mentioned on other shows. We appreciate that for sure, one hundred percent. Hey, yeah, so they, we're getting ready. Look, why don't they goddamn start... subscribe to our YouTube channel? Why don't y'all do there that? Yeah, that well, too. that the fucking number is. I'm embarrassed by y'all. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We didn't want to have to scold you, but Harper got angry. I mean, y'all know fucking every goddamn fart that I do, but y'all can't follow the goddamn YouTube fucking channel. Step up, people. Fuck. How hard is it to hit that goddamn bell? Come on. All right. See? Come on. 
Right, Mike? Okay. Ten four, Bubba. Okay. Can we get serious for a minute? Because um, I know you got one more thing, Doc. Yeah, we got one more thing, and this is serious. So, Harper, maybe you ought to go on mute. Um, Mike, you're probably going to want to get the video version going so that we can get through this. Uh, we do want to send uh, some heartfelt uh, – I don't want to use the, the term everybody uses, but let's just say let's all keep a uh, good, strong listener and wrestling personality, Ian Riccoboni, in our thoughts uh, going forward for the next few weeks. Uh, it's my understanding that, that Ian lost a family member today. And so we want you to know out there that, that we're, uh, we're keeping you in our thoughts. How about that? Well stated. Well stated. Ian's a good dude. On that note, let's get into Saturday night on TBS from April the 18th, 1992. Harper's complaining. He never even watches the show. Yeah. Before we jump into it, let me just say from the beginning, Paul Lee is cutting a promo. I want to play that. We'll react to it on the other side. Here's Paul opening the show. There have been a lot of rumors in World Championship Wrestling about dissension within the dangerous alliance that we have a problem with Larry Zbysko. We have no problem with Larry Zbysko, but we do have one with Nikita Koloff, who stuck his nose in our business at Super Brawl. Now, instead of getting a bodyguard or hiring a hitman or a mercenary or an annihilator, I got one better. A cruncher, the cruncher, Larry Zbysko, who in two straight falls will dispel the rumors and the Russian nightmare tonight on WCW Saturday night. All right. So Paul Lee says there's no problem with the cruncher Larry Zabisco, and then we go to Missy Hyatt, which Hopper's in love at this point of the show. Mm-hmm. Well, good bitch. Miss- just, just fucking turn it off now. Missy then throws to Jim Ross for the show. Jim Ross welcomes us into center stage for the talk show edition of WCW Saturday Night on TBS, and he's going to welcome in Dusty, who is the co-host this week. Dusty says, it's great to be here, and we're going to get funky like a monkey. Doc, any thoughts on the opening? You knew it wouldn't take long for Dusty to get out there. Well, in fairness, who's next? I don't know how many times he does the guest thing, but there's going to be a person weekly, so there's that. I mean, who else is... Can they dig up to come out here and mess this oh, up? Oh, yeah. just wait. Man. We'll have some comedy gold and some of these idiots they bring out. For what real. are we doing, Harper? I mean, seriously. I mean, this is so bad. Maybe it's time for us to quit the show. You, uh, it's It's been time, <laughs> Doc. <laughs> it's been time. Well, we need to hear from this Nikita. Is gar- this is garbage, Mike, and I blame you. Because you knew this was out there when we started this in '85, and right. I didn't. I knew we. I didn't know this was out here. I was. This was my dark period, and you turned on the lights, so I blame you. Yeah, the this good was news my dark is, period too. This is fucking horrible. I mean, just imagine news. back then on a Saturday night when you got fucking MTV going on, and oh, I'm gonna watch this instead. Yeah, right. Would you assholes stop talking and wrestle and cut some promos? That's what I'm thinking. I would have thought it then as a kid, and I would have thought it now as an adult. Well, let's go to Nikita's exceptional promo that he's going to cut because he's taking on the cruncher Larry Zabisco in a two out of three falls match in the main event of this week's show. Here it is. You do it later tonight. Two out of three falls. Nikita Koloff against Larry Zabisco one on one. Well, I understand the Dangerous Alliance. They said, Nikita, you put your nose where it doesn't belong. Well, let me tell you something, Dangerous Alliance. But shut up, stop. You have yet to see the worst of Nikita Koloff. Larry Zabisco, you're in trouble. <sighs> Should be a great matchup. What are your thoughts on that two out of three fall encounter? Well, everybody throughout the world knows me and Nikita Koloff uh, were partners at one time. We formed the superpowers. Since coming back to WCW, he has made a statement. That statement is something that we do not know. He showed up at Super Brawl 2. Was he there to, to help Sting? Was he there to challenge Sting? Was he there to beat up the Dangerous Alliance? Larry Zabisco, the cruncher, has been running in to foul deeds with the Dangerous Alliance as far as I'm concerned. Tonight, we're going to find out live and in color right here on Saturday night what it's all 
about Larry Zabisco, Nikita Koloff. Two out of three falls, it's going to be a barn burner, Jimbo. Plus, we're going to be talking to the heavyweight champion of the world, Sting, Whoa, who has yes. a big problem on his hands yeah. in the shape of Big Van Vader. Big Van Vader. All right, just wanted to play them, set the table to show. Uh, any thoughts, Doc, on Nikita Koloff's promo there? No. Yeah. All right. And then they throw it to Dusty. He goes, he's made a statement, and we do not know what it is. So he just <laughs> buried Nikita. <laughs> they're trying to, they're trying to, well, well, let me say this. They're trying to, they're trying to, like, create this big mystery like Nikita nobody knows why Nikita's here is it here to help out Sting is it here to help out the Dangerous Alliance but they're creating this mystery but they never really create a mystery if that makes sense like they're talking about it like it's a mystery but there's no mystery and and even this week what's Nikita doing he's wrestling a member of the Dangerous Alliance when he at Super Brawl after the match he didn't attack Sting he helped Sting, who was being attacked by members of the Dangerous Alliance. So they're like trying to, trying to create this mystery, but there's no mystery. What were you about to say, Harper? It's almost like a a shitty version of uh, primetime wrestling because it was something like this. Kind Similar. Of. Well, yeah, because you had Bobby Heenan and, and the Gorilla Monsoon, but they're actually in a fucking studio. It's almost like a shittier version of that with them sitting in the chairs and there's someone. Uh-oh. Well, we just lost him. I guarantee you he hasn't restarted that computer. They some pro- if they were trying to do that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, Nobody's going to be as funny as Bobby, though. That's the problem with that. No. Well, let's continue. We keep going. We go to Scotty Flamingo versus Johnny Rich. Scotty Flamingo is accompanied by JT Southern. Some guys, they come out, had a sign that it looked like a first grader created it. And it said something need, like. You, you catch it. Yeah, I need you okay, to catch I'll, that sign. I'll catch the sign. The sign, I'll play, I'll stop it as soon as I get to it, but it says something like Van Hammer, greatest guitar player in world or something. Here, I'm going to hit play. Let's see if I can catch it. I don't have the exact timestamp, but I'll stop it as soon as I see it. There it is. Greatest guitar player of the world. It, <laughs> it's, it's spelled wrong, for one. Van greatest. Hammer. Oh, yeah. G R E. A S T E S. Yeah, that's it. And it's not a pipe paper. He ripped that out of a notebook. That's what it looks like. Like it's because you can see under the R of player to the of the world. There's those. Oh right, where like (laughs) it seeps through from the marks a lot. God, what a fucking. He turned it. He turned it landscape and just tried to write every word he knew or didn't (laughs) know. On this side, I got that's the craziest old... looking. That's the craziest looking in on Van Hammer too. Let 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 Hopper go. What are you about to say, Hopper? <laughs> it's it's like well, I got this old three subject notebook from the from the second grade. Just rip this off and just write it on here. <laughs> that's good. Look at his. Look How at you his spell greater names? Look at everything. <laughs> look at everything. Okay. So the word what? greatest is spelled G R E A T E S. There's no T on the end. No. Change the Y to I and add E S, right? And then guitar I I see G U I T A, but I, is that a, supposed to be is that a supposed to be an R on the end? It looks like just a line. That's an R. That like a okay. kindergartner wrote on air. Greatest guitar player of the wor- <laughs> word. Things got sketchy at the end. We were running out of room. Words were hard to spell. Yeah. It's like for sale, one owner. It's Cold pretty bad, day. man. <laughs> Power windows. <laughs> Cold AC. Bobby Blaze will love this. Oh, Wayne, this is perfect, man. Look at that car right there. 
I mean, it, <laughs> Wayne's laughing too at back, buddy. Cold there. One driver, single owner. This thing's got power steering, power windows, and everything. Yeah, this that sign is pathetic. That's about as bad as that car they wanted to get Bobby Blaze. All right. And it's worse as it oh, scrolls wait, in. Fu- wait, what? What? what He's is got that? some shit on the back. No. Right, there's something on the other side. It no, it's not either. Like he put tape, bro. Is that like... That's right. He, he taped over that tape piece of paper. On. Yeah. Because it's something about rock and roll. And then, yeah, then it says free, free birds at the bottom. Yeah, it does say free birds. What a fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it says? Okay. Okay, hold on. Under van, it says greatest. And then rock under and hammer, it says rock and rock and roll. And I think that says band under greatest. And then of the world. And then, Rockin', and then bro. it says free birds. Wait, I'm so trying I to think touch it's, it with my finger to fucking make it bigger, <laughs> but it's not working. I think it says greatest rock and roll band, free birds. Wait, Something wait, he taped over it with masking tape. Makes sense. I didn't, ex- I didn't expect us to get caught on this. I, well, oh, I, I, had, who, I had it. Who would do this? Uh, a WCW fan in '92. Ah, damn, bro! This is poster board, bro. <laughs> I don't have enough money for poster board. My mother smoked all the meth, and we didn't have any cash to go get a poster board from the from the from the uh, from the Rite Aid Dollar up Tree. the street in Dollar Tree. I mean, I'm I knew Harper was going to be talking about this thirty years from now, but. It didn't seem to matter at the time or I went and just stole it. Well, they didn't have meth back then, did they? Yeah, they did. Just did go they? with it, Hopper. I'm just wondering. All right. Well, let's keep going. We got a match here. Scotty Flamingo versus Johnny Rich. And, yeah. At one okay, point. So... Go ahead. At one point, Dusty compared himself to Raven. Did he really? Yeah. I missed that, but I got a sound bite wild that I got to play. Wild rock and roll stuff. Oh, God. Kind of like me. <laughs> kind of like you. Okay, Dusty. I do have a timestamp. At one point in commentary, Dusty says, uh, I used to have a little afro. Here it is. Same hairstyle. I'll tell you, all of them do, man. They're rock and roll. I'll tell you, it's a new era out there, brother. My hair was never that long. You going out of the baby. Sunset Flip got a near fall out of it. I had a no afro one time, man. I looked good, too. I remember that. I know it, man. Me and you have been down the road a long time. I'm saying we've seen a great change here. Well, you've seen a great change, all right. Anyway, had to play that quick timestamp when Dusty said he looked good. It was a little afro back in the day. Uh, Doc, any other thoughts on this match before I go to the finish? I like Raven still. He's not as good as he'll be when he is Raven, but I'll, I can see it coming, so I like it. Um, this went on too long. But if you look at Raven, look at Raven right there, right there. Kids, don't take drugs, because look at him now. <laughs> Come on. This is a good-looking young guy. Yeah, yeah he was. Drugs got a hold of him, bro. Come on. Man, we all, we all allegedly. Hold, yeah, for real. I don't think it's allegedly. I think he's admitted it. Yeah, he'll tell you. Uh, Raven wins with a pile driver, and, and he some chin nuts. Johnny Rich, and he gives him. He does give him some chin nuts. From there, we go to a. I don't want to say a long replay, but we get a replay. Jim Ross and Dusty throw to a replay of Sting winning the title at Super Brawl. And as they throw to it, Dusty says, there's no other feeling like it in the world, baby, when you win the WCW World's Heavyweight title. And, of course, There's no other feeling like when you whip out that pencil and book yourself to win that (laughs) title. (laughs) I mean, in fairness, it wasn't like Dusty was constantly booking himself to win the world title. I mean, I can make the argument that he probably could have done it a little sooner. I mean... If you really think about it, he he didn't want the belt. He only had it for like a couple of weeks, even when he won it. Yeah, in, that's true. 
Yeah. So, I mean, you know. All right, I'm going to play this because Sting is all over the place in this Ugh, promo, Jesus in his interview. Christ. I got to play it. I, I got to play it. I hate you. I got to play it. Because at the you. end, it's so awkward. Listen to how awkward I, I, it is when we get to the end. I, I so, hate you. This is, great. This here. right here is why this format is the absolute worst. Please play well, it now. You, Sting shouldn't be up there talking for four minutes. No one should. Minutes. Bullshit. Ric Flair could do it. Here it is. I'm going to ask you a question since... You won the World's Heavyweight Championship at Super Brawl, but after Super Brawl, we know the situation that was created by the Dangerous Alliance really interrupted your celebration, and recently you've been in a world of problems with Big Van Vader, but how does it feel to be the World's Heavyweight Champion for the second time? I can answer this question all day long by just simply saying, <laughs> That's how it felt right there. That's a pretty un unique way to put it, Drake. You know, winning the World's Heavyweight title was, was a tremendous goal of mine. I know it is of you, but I know right now that you got to be focused just a little bit. And that focus has to be on 450 pounds. We're talking about a man that says he's as quick as you, says he's meaner than you, and says that you fear him. We're talking about Big Van Vader. How you going to attack such an individual. <laughs> I like the way you put that individual. Yes. I don't know. I'm going to have to change my tactics. All I can say is when he zigs, I'm going to have to zag. That's the easiest way for me to do it because, you know, any opponent that I've ever been up against in the past has always been up head to head, smack face to face. I've never been afraid of anybody, never feared anybody. Van Vader, on the other hand, I may have, I don't know if it's fear or just a lot of respect for, so I'm going to have to change my tactics. Definitely, Dusty. Well, you know, uh, like you just said, you made a, a great statement when you talk about fear. There is a difference between fear and, and being ready. I know one thing about the stinger, Mr. Jimbo Ross. I know one thing for sure, that the stinger has never been a fear to no man. So, Big Van Vader, I might be biased, but stinger, if you focus on him, you take him down and you rub his big old burly nose in the mat for me one time, won't you, baby? I'll do that, and I'll say that's from Dusty Rhodes. Sting, I know you've got Big Van Vader on your mind, but past Big Van Vader, what are the plans for the World's Heavyweight Championship uh, later on this summer? Well, I've always said I would defend the world title against any worthy contender and anybody in Japan. I think I'd like to go to Japan. The great Muda, Fujinami, there's a host of others over there in Japan that I'd like to defend it against, as well as a whole bunch here. Sound like our champion's ready to go, Dupree. Let me ask you one question now for everybody out there right now and all the little stingers. If you had one word to say to them, what would it be, baby? Sounds like they took the words right out of my mouth. Woo! Yeah. Now we're having some fun, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, our thanks I'm to sorry, the stingers. Sit down. I gotta, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll just sit right back down. I'm being a gentleman. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Sting for being with us. Let's hear it for the world's heavyweight champion. And we'll be back on WCW Saturday night, right after this timeout. Why did that seem like the most awkward thing, thing in the world? I missed it the first time because I'd already started fast forwarding. Why did that? Why did it just feel awkward at the end? He's like, ow, ow, and then, then he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And Jim Ross was like, uh, well, you kind of messed up a flow thing, but uh. Okay, I guess we'll go to commercial now. I don't know. This is so bad. Can we talk about Dusty? Sting's uh, cowboy boots? Why? He's got... So I need to explain this, and if you're a patron, you can watch it. You just go to tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT, and you can see the video versions each and every week. So, he, you know, he's got his face paint on, and he's got his, um, you know, muscle shirt, and he's got a weight belt in his pink tights, and... Cowboy boots, and it it's. I'm like, what what is what is thing trying to do with the look? You can see it real good when he's walking down. Is he wearing real cowboy boots or those wrestling cowboy boots? I don't. Though they don't look like wrestling. They might be wrestling boots, but they don't look like wrestling boots to me. Man, now, I don't know what, what look he's going he for here. For? I don't know. It just looks really odd. The the, the I don't know. It's just his attire is strange for the interview. And then why did he come out? I mean, if he's a champion, come out with the belt. 
I agree. I'd rather see him with the belt as opposed to the weightlifting belt. Yeah. And I can't tell if those are real cowboy boots or not. Uh, Man. They look like boots because that, that's not a wrestling sole. You can tell if you look at their left foot as he's oh, moving. Oh, yeah, I see it, yeah. You, yeah, so that's cowboy boots. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> uh, Dustin may have uh, got him for him. Who knows? <laughs> Probably so. Anyway, I thought Doc would love it, so I had to play it. It, I th- it just thought Thanks. it was so good. The screaming at the end, <laughs> the the awkwardness of it all. I was like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> so, yeah, I had to play it. All right, let's continue. Vinny Vegas in the next match takes on Chris Sullivan, and we get a pretty quick one. Uh, Vegas is going to do the snake eyes, drop Sullivan's head on a top turnbuckle, and Vinny Vegas is going to win. Uh, but, Doc, what do you have from this one? Well, v- Vinny Vegas is better than Oz, at least. But I, I think he's better off as a master blaster. No. No? Those master blaster, blaster promos were terrible. Yeah. Okay. Not that Vinny Vegas <laughs> promos are great, but... Yeah. Dusty buries him and says... I know everyone in Vegas, and I've never seen him there. I heard that. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It just makes you... Well, so that's not bad, because he's a heel. He's a heel, though, so... Okay. Here's the other it's thing. okay. Nash is built like a shit, brick shit house here. Let's put a shirt on him. I don't know. He's... I feel like he's kind of slender right now. I feel like he was actually more bulky when he came in as a master blaster. Maybe. But he's had some gimmicks, that's for damn sure. He needs to lay Uh, off Eli Drake, that's all I know. Come on. I'm not even keeping in touch with whatever you're talking about, so I'll leave it alone. He basically said Eli Drake does nothing but steal the Rock's moves. And and Persona. These old-timers... Get real finicky about stuff when they ain't somebody tries to come up in the world. Yeah, all of them. It it, isn't it. Flair does it. Cornette, Nash. They all they all get real finicky about guys that have talent and leverage things from guys from the past. It's. It, it kills me that they do that because the the old timers all did the, the the same people saying it. They did the same thing. They stole stuff from the old timers back in their day. I mean, Flair's even admitted it. So like, yeah. Come on. All right. Any thoughts on the WCW top 10? They learned how to spell consequences. Yeah. And they've got most of the States, right. And almost all of them, actually. The only, the only, thing I found was they put a period after NC for North Carolina for Ricky Steamboat, and that's a little yeah. mistake. And for Minnesota, they actually spell Minnesota out instead of putting just... He's from the whole state, bro. Right, right. he's from the he's, whole state. He's from, like, the Great Lakes and everything. Yeah. He's a fish. Yeah. Whatever. Ravishing Rick Flounder. <laughs> Ravishing Flounder Root. <laughs> Let's continue. We're going to go to the next match. Uh, J.M. Ross and Dusty Rose throw to Arn Anderson and Bobby Eaton, who are the WCW World Tag Team Champions, versus Terry Bronson and Joe Cruz. We've seen Cruz before. He kind of looks like a mix between, like, Wyndham and Magnum, I guess. Best way to describe him. Oh, in yeah. My opinion. He's kind of got – he's a big dude, not small at all. I know we've talked about him before. Anyway, Doc, let me throw to you. What do you have from this one? Um, all four are wearing red gear except for the back britches of Arn. So three and a half are wearing red. I hate the black and red, man. Everybody Watch Arn. Wears that now. Watch black and Arn red. Everybody wears that now. Everyone wears black and fucking red. Can't stand it. Stick bandit. Oh. Stick. I had different. I I I wore like different combination of colors. You had your road Michael Vick jersey in your home. No, but even before that, like when I had my Fubu gear, I had like I had like a 
like a red and grayish one. I had a, I had a silver and blue one. Um, like I had a couple different, even my singlets, you know, one of them, it was red, black, and white. But I mean, that was mostly covered because I had the jersey over. But I had a couple different ones. One was just black and white. Anyway. You still got your kinda, shit? You still got your it's gear? somewhere in my garage. Come on, bro. Put that shit on. Nah, Let's go. That's cool. Come on. Just put it on and just so when your kids walk in, they could be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> just sit there on the couch. Like <laughs> yeah, just sit there like I was over watching Sports Center. <laughs> run some invis- yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, lift up the garage door and run some invisible ropes in your garage for the neighborhood to see let them know go, you mean business I should go cut the grass in it hell yeah what the hell is that guy doing <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's the, family that them jer- the jerseys I have are like are way too big for me there's because they're two X's they're just like super duper baggy now. You know why you know that? Because you've been wearing this shit and posing in a fucking mirror. Right. <laughs> because you get that itch, Mike. Come on. Right. I didn't Lace them up, no brother. Bell. Lace them up. Lace them up. I didn't hear no fucking bell. Come on. Well, you know, I mean, I've been trying to get the champ. I'm sorry, Luke Hawks. You know, I'm sorry, Oren, to, for years. Hey. Danny Flamingo was trying to get him to book a match with me. For hey, go years. down there, have a match. I'll come down. You leave your boots in the ring. Your kids yeah. can see you wrestle. You can do like, it. Like, who's that old man? I oh, told him I was, I was like, I was like, I, I'd love to do it, but he's just going to have to whip my ass real quick. There's no way I'm getting in there and doing no 15 minutes. You've lost just your work. mind. All you got to do is Bruh, work. No, I want, I would want, I would want to do the job of jobs. <laughs> oh, then you needed to get me in the ring. <laughs> that won't happen. Let me pick. So, you. I can get. I bet I could get. You know what is it? A card? What do you need to get in the ring in Louisiana? I can pass. Oh, the uh, uh yeah, I mean, a, a wrestling license. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Okay, just don't do a pile driver. Well, it's then like I'm out. Louisiana and they're bullshit. All right, Doc. What do you have from Arn versus? I love the fact that Bobby brought him over to the camera and punched him in the camera. We I missed that from the studio days. That was a good touch. Um, we did have the cameraman miss the Alabama Jam completely. Yeah, it happens. (laughs) I don't know what else Uh, to say. How? (laughs) Arn. Slams down this guy and sets the guy up for the Alabama Jam for the camera. I don't want to say the cameraman missed it. The, produ- the producer missed it because there's a cameraman shooting this. Like there's a that that's the floor camera. He's got on, but there's a hard camera that sees this all. There's another camera across the ring that caught this. It's just that from a production standpoint, they didn't have the right shot. So it's not fair to put it on a cameraman, but I hear you. But they win. I'll put it on whoever I fucking want to, pal. No, you won't. Hey, it's good to see the champs be dominant. That's probably a bad sign for them. But, okay. You know I've been knowing the champ for 25 years. 25. You know, bro, y'all think y'all fucking funny. Y'all ain't fucking funny. When you you imitate me, why you you always sound like a special person? (laughs) He didn't say that. That's what he said to me. Harper was on when he said it. Yeah, but Mike, come on, bro. I mean, we cool and all, right? Why wouldn't you imitate no. me? You sound like a special person. We are, in fact, not cool. Let's go to the the, the WCW magazine segment. Dusty Jeez, hypes up war games. This is a hat games. on a hat right here. Dusty, Dusty hypes up war games that is coming. And then we go to the magazine segment with Bischoff. And Bischoff talks about Sting's injury. Bischoff says it's a rib injury, but we aren't sure how that will affect him at war games. That's going to be a common theme up until war games. Bischoff also mentions mentions the Steiners versus Fujinami and Izuka. And the Steiners, they cut a brief promo on them. I wasn't going to play it, Doc. Did you have anything from it? It was kind of meh. Right. 
And that match is going to happen at Wrestle War 92, the Steiners versus right. Fujinami and Izuka. So just so I want to watch it. I just don't know that I want to hear him cut promos about it. We then cover Brian Pillman and Z-Man settling up mm. for the light heavyweight title. And then Bischoff moves to Ricky Steamboat and Rick Rude's feud. And Steamboat cuts a brief promo. And then nothing against Steamboat's promo. Then we go. Did you have anything from it? Just that he keeps bringing up his kid. That kid killed his career, man. Him and that kid and Bonnie did a tag team squash match on his career. Then we go to this weird promo. This is odd. We go to DDP and Jim Ross is interviewing DDP. And I got to play it because this is kind of. We needed we need a Dakota ring or something, bro. Well, I think this happened when you were out. This whole thing with with DDP and WCW management. So this has been going on for a while. It just I, I, doesn't I caught make, up, yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. So let's go to the promo. Here it is. Well, thanks very much, Eric. And yes, I have caught up with Diamond Dallas Page, a man that's found himself an executive vice president of WCW K. Allen Fry's doghouse because you've been making unauthorized remarks about WCW policy. Now, I don't want to get yourself in any more trouble, but what is the status of this situation? Well, you know, JR, the way I see it, Diamond Dallas Page is very misunderstood right now. I don't want to talk about WCW policy. I wouldn't dream of it. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't dream of talking about the NWA World Tag Team Tournament that's going to be announced May 2nd right here on WCW. Shouldn't have said that. Oh, man. Speaking about tag teams, which were not, Terry Bam Bam Gordy and Dr. Death Steve Williams will be in that tournament. This is a serious tournament, JR. Obviously, Eric, nothing has changed as far as Diamond Dallas Page is concerned. Back to you. So I don't understand. The thing that makes no sense is where's their money in an angle with DDP and K. Allen Fry? Everywhere. You just have to have the right vision. Because that's 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 what's so odd about this. And then he's purposely slipping up mentioning an NWA tag tournament in the weeks to come, which that's going to be a clash soon or down the line. So it's like he's given spoiler. I don't. It's just really strange. I don't like it. Hopper, you still Stop there? Stop it. You must step away. You know he went to go take a shit. Take a he was on break. time tonight, so he didn't get his shit out. That's true. Everybody else is trying to get their shit in. He's trying to get his shit out. <laughs> Lastly, we get a fan question from Sting. I didn't make a huge note of it, but it's something about the fan wants to know, hey, Sting, who do you want to give a chance at your world title? And Sting gives this lame answer that put us all to sleep. So there was that. Any other thoughts on the Sting or WCW no, Magazine? No, 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 no. This was awful. Then we go to Jim Ross, who throws to a video of Van Hammer and the Freebirds at an NBA Atlanta Hawks game. And uh, Doc Hammer throws a lariat at the Hawk mascot and puts him out. So we're running angles now at NBA games. I, I guess this is a way to get people into your product. Your thoughts, well, Doc? We, we don't know. Well, first of all, that mascot was in severe danger of being hurt for real. Um, we also don't know what that mascot was doing that led to the baby face lariating him. I hope it was something. Otherwise, we have our baby faces at the arena attacking the local team's mascot. Right. That's what I thought. That's now, we may not have seen the whole story. But we can't give WCW the benefit of the doubt because it's WCW. Yeah, it was really odd. So they're doing stuff, and they may or may not know why they're doing it. It's kind of like children, you know? What are you doing? What do you mean? Yeah. Why are you doing that? I don't know. I feel like they, if they really wanted to explain it, they could have done so. I, I don't want to knock it too much. It's just really weird. The reason I say hey, I don't want to knock it too much. They had the presence it's... of mind to get their wrestlers over at the Hawks game. That that far, that beats most of their thinking usually. That That's where I was going. Like you're you're bringing your stars to a Hawks game. There's going to be a lot of kids there. That That's a good move. Like I don't see anything wrong with that. It just is odd that the babyface Van Hammer 
throws a lariat at the mascot. That's that's the strange part. Right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's it's not the worst thing. Just just weird. From there, we go to the next match, which is Marcus Bagwell and the Z Man versus Buddy Lee Parker and Randy Starr. Doc, your thoughts from this? Where's James burner? Earl Wright? He's been. He's not there. He's not going to be back for a while. I looked it up a few months back. He's not there. That's why you never see him with him. Right I feel now. like we need to. We need State Patrol back together, bro. I totally agree. We need State Patrol. I know you do. You're like the only person that really truly I values love the State, State Patrol. Patrol. I love the State Patrol, man. They were always on Worldwide Saturday God, night. They were on every syndicated piece of crap show ever. I'm talking during the during like the the you know night early nitro days, man. I remember watching. I was like, man, these dudes are tearing it up, man. They need to get a little push behind them, man. I love the State Patrol. Get them in high voltage together and look out. Oh God, high voltage. Remember them? Yeah, there he is. Yeah. He finished taking his shit. Yeah, it was bad. I, couldn't I hear you, man. I, I dude, I remember I was dropping my daughter off the other morning, and then that's what you it call just, it. It just hit me. <laughs> it hit me on the way back from school. I'm like, oh my god, I got to take a dump, and I'm like Uh-oh. 15 minutes from home, and I'm like, oh god. That moment oh, of panic god. when you start doing the math and it's not working out in your favor. Oh, it was hurt, oh, yeah. bro. Then you start looking for like what I call safe houses, like the, <laughs> like, like the shit there. Okay, they got a big lot. I could go shit in there. <laughs> but you see, cause, because I go through this. Every time I go through fucking New Orleans, because here's the thing, it's New Orleans has no Burger Kings or McDonald's or Taco Bell. There's like nowhere to shit, especially in the East, where they got nowhere to piss. I piss behind dumpsters and shit all the time in the East. Please clip that. Because there is nowhere to go. He doesn't understand, Hopper. I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't care. I want it out of context. I want. That is a sound drop. Yeah, it's like you can't. And so I'm like, fuck, man. And I just like go behind some dumpster behind some old, old raggedy family dollar or something off a of reed or some shit. <laughs> but the New thing Orleans. is, huh. in Algiers, if I got to take a crap, I go to TJ Maxx. <laughs> Scope them out. They got a clean bathroom now, huh? Oh, yeah. Because, you see, the problem is it's it's the homeless people that fucking destroy the bathrooms. That's why. Because, dude, I remember one time I was driving down St. Claude Avenue, Mike. I had a piss so bad, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? And there's a McDonald's there. I'm like, oh, good. I'm going to pull in there. There was a coin slot on the door. <laughs> a coin slot, like on a fucking Coke machine. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I go up to the like, counter. That's like, how yeah, you solve that. Yeah, I, I was like, yeah, they got like a coin slot. Like, like, she's like, oh, you got to put a quarter in there to uh, for the door to open or you buy something. So I bought, you know, whatever, a fucking dollar hamburger or something just so I, I can go take a, a piss. But yeah, but I mean, you, you, if you got a quarter... You could put it in there. It's like it's like Street Fighter Two. We just boom, put the quarter in there, <laughs> fucking bathroom door to, uh, uh, open because the homeless people would fucking destroy it. Dude, New Orleans never ceases to amaze it a, me. It was a coin slot, like on a Coke machine. I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is this?" On the <laughs> to get into the restroom, bro. To get into the restroom, there's a coin slot. <laughs> Well, that is how you solve a problem, I, I, I guess. That is how you that. solve that was the forever problem. ago. I hadn't heard that one, man. Oh, well, dude, that's that great, was forever though. Forever ago, man. Fuck out the Katrina. Fuck, I was going all kinds of places behind them old fucking abandoned houses. Jesus. And then when you go back there, you fucking realize I'm not the only person who thinks it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we we did cut I a patron used to go episode. You and O too. U and O was my safe uh, safe haven too. Colleges are safe spaces these days. That's we true. um we you we did do a patron episode on 
on worse places to take a dump. Remember yeah. that? Uh, the answer to that is every place but your home. That well, is true. Kind Our of, buckets. but yeah, Bucky's is clean. But but here's the thing, man. It's not really every place but home. Like, you know, when I used to go into the office, that wasn't really the worst place to take a dump. There's there's worse places like Walmart. There's always or, a worse place. Right. So like but, the but office. But you want home field advantage when you're pooping. Oh, God. I need home field advantage, bro. Because I, 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 the bombs I drop, I can knock a fucking elephant down who's eight miles away. With the stench that I'm dropping. Dude, Monday, bro. Last Monday, I'm driving a slot L, right? And I got to go, bro. Like, it, bam. It's like, ha, ha, ha. Remember me? I'm like, fuck. One yeah, or two? It, it, the two. And oh, I'm like, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Because, because I'm in fucking Mishu, bro. They ain't nowhere to go. It's just swamp and fucking raccoons and gators and shit. I'm like, why am I gonna go take a shit? I was like, oh, they get that tr- that little bullshit truck stop on the Irish Bayou fucking exit right there before you. What's it called? The fucking twin span or whatever that that goes to Slide L. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know, yeah, I know so you're about. I pull in there, bro. It's you know, it's it's that truck stop bullshit with the the little shit casita with the with the slot machines. They they got one toilet and a fucking urinal. And it was all these like Latino construction workers waiting in line. I- I'm like, I can't fucking. I was so pissed, bro, because I had to go now. And they got one stall and the one pisser. I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. I was so pissed. I just fucking just fuck it. I'm on a f- fucking. I'm on risk it. I'm gonna drive the fucking slide out. I was so Did pissed. You make it? Yes. There was two fucking these these. Two Latino guys, and then the broad, this Latino the broad, what? this this fucking Latina broad was waiting to fucking clean it. She's sitting there with the bucket on, and all. I was like, "This is like a fucking Kirby th- enthusiasm fucking episode." So a coyote was waiting to clean it, is what I'm hearing. Come on, my, you see? <laughs> no, you 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 need to clip that. <laughs> clip what? Yeah, so, y'all been yeah. telling me all night to clip shit, okay? <laughs> Damn. So yeah. Uh, so fuck. so so where did you finally take your dump? Uh, when I crossed over, I went to the fucking Walmart. Wow, you had to hold <laughs> crossed over. Hour. Did you die? <laughs> no, he crossed the twin span, which goes yeah. a part of goes across wow, the, the small the part of. Shit? He he had to drive all the way across the twin span, which took him. Which this is a few miles. It's the smaller part of crossing Lake yeah. Pontchartrain. It's about five at the most, ten minutes. Yeah, it's not far. But when you got to take a dump and it's coming out, bro, yeah. it, it ain't I mean, the easiest no thing fucking, to do. Yeah, I mean, it's, fuck. It's like, huh. you know, DEFCON 1. Well, speaking of taking dumps, Wait. Bagwell and Zinc win their match. And then we go, to, we go to... We go to... Larry Zabisco with Medusa versus Nikita Koloff in a two out of three falls match. And the my main comment, I do have the finish here, but my main comment before I throw to Doc and ask him what he's got, there are lots of grabbing a hold. These fools went like 30 minutes of grabbing holes and laying on a mat. It's a language barrier. That's no, problem. Doc. Did you have thoughts? Um. Yeah. No one is asking for this match to start. Um. Early on, you get an abdominal stretch. I always like an abdom- good abdominal stretch. Somebody should be using that today. Okay. Yeah. Can I get 103.42? You can, but I need to play something before 103.42. Okay. Sure. Dusty shouts out his mama. And anyway, let me go to the audio. Here it is. Quick. Uh, I know Nikita Koloff, as you said, Russian sickle one time, and it's turned out the lights of parties over for Larry Zabisco. That's what Dandy Don would say. Yeah, baby, we know that for a fact. Hello to my mama down in Houston, Texas, watching this thing tonight. You know, it's not true that she's dating Jack Palance. 
the one-handed uh, push-up man. Whoa. She's like a younger man than him. He's 72 years old. I hear that, boy. That makes my mama feel good. This guy went for the... I had to look up Jack Palance. He's the guy that did Ripley's Believe It or Not when we were kids. He, well, did, he was in City Slickers and, and Batman. That, that okay. And so then when I looked him up, I was like, oh, that's the old dude who had like parts in Young Guns and Batman right. and Treasure Island. Okay. Did he say that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so most he of his movies. Guy. Remember he most did of, that? I don't remember that. No. It was, yeah, I think it was for the Oscars. He like comes out to show. You know the great shape he's in for his age, and he starts doing one-handed push-ups on the on the stage. That motherfucker was seventy-three years old when he brought it. When Dusty brought it up, right? And that's what was funny because Jr. says, "Oh yeah, that's right. Mama Rose likes a younger man." <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, but but if you look up like the movies he's been in, like the majority of his movies were were like late 70s and before not that he, he was, didn't make movies in the 80s was, and 90s he was the bad guy in 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 uh if you ever watch old like rifleman episodes or shit like yeah. that those those old black and white westerns he's the you know the bad guy with the black hat on and because he yeah he looks like that yeah mm-hmm like I said, I, I I realized who he was once I looked him up. I was like, oh, I was like, who is that? And then I looked him up. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that dude. I, I didn't realize it was his name. So anyway, um, Doc, what time stamp did you want? 104 what? 103.42. 103.42. Am I playing audio from it or? No. Okay. So we're Just at 103.35. Yeah. What happens here? Nikita shoots a uh, shoulder tackle to, the, to Zabisco Oops. and... I don't know what that botch was supposed to be, but it looks like Nikita is supposed to. <laughs> Nikita looks like he's supposed to leapfrog over Larry, and Good. is he uh, supposed to be a backdrop or a leapfrog? One of the two, but yeah, it it was a, sh a cluster muck. Yeah. All right. What other timestamps, Doc? I'm going to tell you this: the first fall was long. They did some holds. But some? I liked it, and I think they should have stopped the match right there. That's where this two out of three falls was too much. If this had been a one-fall match, this would have been a great match at one fall. Okay, that's fair. But it did, yeah, it did go on too long. So, right, right. the finish, Larry Zabisco pile drives Nikita, but Nikita kicks out. And then Larry goes for a brain buster, but Nikita blocks it and goes to an inside cradle. And Nikita ends up winning the first fall. The f and what Doc's talking about here too is the first fall took like 15 minutes, so it it was not a one of those quick. Whenever you see these two out of three falls, that you know you always get a quick one or just a couple minutes in. So, and they didn't mail this in. Like Nikita and Zabisco went out there and worked, but they were grabbing a lot of holes. I mean, if we're gonna be fair, and then here's the one, two, three, and Nikita wins fall one. Um. The second fall to me is where the crowd got louder. Um, there were more Nikita chants, and the second fall didn't go near as long. What do you have? From, do you have anything for the second fall, Doc? No, I was yeah, done I after any. that. I was like, shit, "What are you making me watch two more falls of this shit for?" I was happy with one, and I was good. Now I'm just gonna get angry. Well, what I liked is they didn't go three falls. They just let Nikita win. So Nikita, Nikita, he basically took a beating for a lot of fall too. But then he finally gets control and he goes for the Russian sickle, but Paul Lee trips Nikita. Nikita recovers though, and Larry Zabisco shoots Nikita into the ropes. Nikita ducks and comes back and delivers the Russian sickle anyway. And then he ends up pinning Larry Zabisco in two falls. So my actual thing was, I was like, I'm glad they only did two falls. And not three, especially when you think about one went 15 minutes and then, yeah. you know, the next one went like well, over and 10. Well, it sets up they're mad at Larry. So that, that, I, I got it. That made sense. Hey, my thought on this was this was better than it had any right to be. Yeah, you can say what you want. Best thing ever. 
But it was better than I had feared. It was much better than it had any right to be. You nailed it. Because I didn't have expectations. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Right. Right. So again, from here though, they are working an angle into this. Now Larry Zabisco lost to Nikita. Paul Lee's a little upset with him. So let's go now to one of the last two segments of the show, which is a promo. Jim Ross is going to throw it backstage to Missy Hyatt, who's being messy and trying to get the scoop. Here it is. All right, welcome back, everyone, to WCW Saturday Night. I understand Missy Hyatt is trying to get involved in a conversation with the Dangerous Alliance. Let's go now to Missy Hyatt. scoops let's go back to jim ross and dusty Rhodes. well dream it sounds like there are some problems in the camp of the dangerous alliance i know one thing when you lose two straight falls i mean that's like getting beat 45 or 55 to nothing larry zabisco got some problems but do the dangerous alliance have problems now with larry zabisco they better not have any problems here next week because stunning steve austin will be here next week to defend the television championship of the world two out of three falls against barry windham here are comments from each athlete Done in Steve Austin next week, right here on WCW Saturday night. I am going to prove to you in a two out of three fall match that the World Television Championship is on the wrong person and should be around my waist. I'm going to waltz into the ring and take your title. Barry Windham next week on WCW Saturday night. I'm going to give you another chance to be the World Television Champion. And I'm going to prove to the world that stunning Steve Austin is the best World Television Champion of all time. Dream, that's going to be a tremendous matchup. Well, I'm going to tell you what. All right. We don't have to watch the rest of it. It's actually about to go off air. Doc, your thoughts on first Paul chewing out Larry Zabisco? It's going somewhere. We'll see. Yeah. I love how they they explain why there's someone there with a camera. Nowadays, you just see them sitting, just standing there. Right. Right. Missy's like, I got the scoops. She's got the scoops already. Oh, she has two scoops, baby. Just like the uh, Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Just two scoops. I thought you were going to say like, uh, you know, Booberry and Frankenberry and no. Fruit Brute. And... I had to break down and buy that shit at fucking full price. I feel bad for myself. <laughs> I feel bad for myself. Yeah. <laughs> Not the homeless people that need a quarter to get into the bathroom. <laughs> you having to pay full sticker price the on this blueberry. I've always noticed is that the the Count Chocula is never it never makes it to the fucking clearance rack. That's the first one to sell out. So I was like, man, if I'm gonna get this shit, I better do it now. So I had to fucking break fucking protocol. So you paid full price for Count Chocula. Yeah. So Wow. You're welcome, General Mills. <laughs> All right. Um any thoughts, Doc, on mm-hmm. Wyndham and Austin's promos as we go off air? Let's get it on. I'll I like that. All right. So that's next week, two out of three falls. And that is how they wrap up the show. They do also say that Bill Freilich from the Falcons will be here next week as a guest commentator. I can't remember how bad he is. I feel like he's bad. Like, just terrible in the job. Well, but everybody's going to be bad in this format. How not much everybody. How we have of this? Yeah, well, what is this? Week three of it? It lasts about two months. So. Damn, man. Bill Watts comes in and says, this doesn't work for me, brother, among other things. But anyway, that's where we're at. This is how the episode wraps up. Before we rate it and hand out the Arn Anderson Toot Toot Award, uh, please go to tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT and become a patron where you can get access to all of our WCW pay-per-views, our Clash of the Champion shows, the NWA Power shows, uh, the World Class shows with Lance and I, and the ECW shows as well. All of that is available on Patreon at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Plus, all the video versions of the shows that the three of us review are there as well. Doc, who are you going to give your... I'm sorry, why don't you rate it first? That's what we always do. 
because the two out of three falls was better than it should have been, I'm going to up my grade a little bit here this week and give this a B minus. Hopper, what are you rating it? I'll give it a C plus. Jesus. He's like a fucking parakeet to you, Doc. What? Uh, I said I'm a C plus. A, I'm, yeah, I think y'all C plus and B minus are around the same thing. I'm giving it a B plus. I thought this episode was fine, especially the two out of three. B plus. Jeez. What a, a B cheerleader. plus. Yeah, what a fucking mark. <laughs> it's not wrong alright and now we need to give a toot toot award out mm. Doc I know you're going to give it to Sting so let's just spill it I'm going to give it to that guy who made that sign oh come on <laughs> really he taped over it and made another sign that's resourceful yeah that's just crazy like who who thinks of that I know, baby. Just... My thing is, two things had to happen. He must have went to a previous event and had that shit laying around, or laying in a back seat of a '79 fucking Cutlass. <laughs> and he, and he, got home and he just put that <laughs> tape over it. <laughs> or he had tape with him there. It says, wait, uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to make another sign. And he takes every, it. Yeah. What, the, what the fuck, bro? Everybody listening to this has a in their life that they wish would be as resourceful with money as that guy was putting tape on it and repurposing <laughs> one piece of paper. God damn, bro. I get That's four deliveries from shit. Amazon. I get four deliveries from Amazon daily. Oh, God. Jesus. Do you, for real? Bro, when I was by his house in July, when we were taping those shows, those patron shows that day, behind me as I'm sitting at his kitchen table, there's a a bench seat for like a window, I guess I'd call it. Yeah. And there was a pile of Amazon boxes. What do y'all do with those boxes? You recycle for the environment. Oh. <clears throat> I was like, what is, I was like, is this the normal let, doc no, just shakes his let, head? Let me be honest and fair about that. Set that record straight. That was a bunch of donated school supplies because my wife's a teacher and you we don't use our property taxes for things like teacher salary or school budgets. <laughs> and so they all go on Amazon and get other people in the community to donate school supplies so that teachers have enough shit to do run class. That's what that is. So while I'd like to kick Mrs. Duck in the nuts for that, um, metaphorical nuts, not real nuts. Um, that bar, that stash of stuff was school supplies. Okay. Got two packages today though. <laughs> Had so... three yesterday. That was abnormal, but and, normally and those weren't schools and those weren't school supplies. Normally that ledge is still full of Amazon boxes, is what he's trying to tell you. Right. I just don't so want you that. to get too far off the, the page there. You already got heat with Miss Doc for that Wi Fi password thing. So I'm just trying <laughs> that to That was the most in. white people thing I've ever seen in my life. What it say? <laughs> it's just the the Wi Fi password is written on a whiteboard on a little little bitty whiteboard eraser thing in the kitchen. I'm like, I'm like, why would you write that down and put that there? Well, who's in, gonna see it besides the people that, that's in the household? Right. Bruh, I'm a paranoid motherfucker, okay? And I feel like I feel like you just don't write that down. Okay. Whatever, bruh. I've always that's used terrible. to I used to write it like like on a post it and just stick it on a laptop. There you go. Can't and walk she got mad at here. me because I said I I was talking about her whiteboard with the fucking bro. You should have seen it. It was some white people stuff because there was some other stuff written on it too that you will only see in white people. Like, don't forget lunchables. It was, I'm just saying, bro. You would not see that in no black household, man. 
And that's what she got mad about. And now she's still mad at me because of that. Or for who are you giving your toot toot award to? Ah, uh, Sting's <laughs> boots. Fuck it. Sting's boots. Yeah, okay. yeah. See what yeah. this has done. We made it through seven years of giving out awards seriously, and this format has destroyed it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give my toot toot to. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't have a. Do I have to give it out? I sure. mean, I think about giving mine to Missy because she looks great. Like uh, when you paused it just yeah. now, she don't looks. Move it. Mm-hmm. Leave it there. Leave it yeah. there. Yeah. Don't get off Skype. <laughs> they rubbing one out. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna give it to Sting's boots too. I think that's a great choice, and uh, that's how we're gonna wrap up this week's episode. So uh, before we get out of here, Doc, let me throw to you. Anything else? Man, I, I've had it. I'm shot. Y'all, I'm, y'all I'm tuckered out up. tonight? Yeah. Grab a hold. Yeah. Grab a hold for real. Um, all right. Well, yeah, that's going to wrap this week's episode up. Another fun ride through the talk show edition of Saturday Night on TBS, which is not as bad as these two fools it's and hooligans. It's bad, Michael, and you know no, it. No, it's not. It's stupid. You know it. It's not. I'm getting tired. I'm getting. I'm getting tired of this. I mean, I'm tired of y'all beating this up like it's the worst thing ever. Okay. It's not that bad. Okay, then why they stop doing it? I don't have a good answer for you. Well, it's not the best thing ever. I'll but come on. You starting to fucking put it in reverse. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, it's time for us to get out of here. Uh, Hopper, we're going to roll. It's uh, We're done with this week's episode. Hit the tagline so uh, we can hit the sack. Book it, bitch. <laughs>